listings, listings, and more listings. I want to share with you today our top five ways we're generating listing leads. Stick with us on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality 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 meet and realty real estate yeah, right. realty. This, you meet yeah. whatever this is episode 199 and you can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com jenna brian february what the heck how did it get to be february i don't know i don't even know january was a blur Okay, so much going on. I was thinking about this this week. You know, we had old Punsquatty Phil come out and tell us we're going to have six more weeks of winter. Arr. Although I kind of like winter, so good job, Phil. Uh, we have Lunar New Year going on right now. It's Black History Month, and the Olympics started yesterday. I, so I actually, did you watch some of that? I actually I, caught the more. I caught the opening for you. I know because it was on at, at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, you know, I, here, it was here, in here, and so. I caught part of the uh, opening ceremonies. Yeah. I, yeah, I caught a little bit of it, and then I taped it because I always like to watch it. Yeah, it's a, actually it's fun to kind of breeze through that. So. Did you see that last night they were doing some of the qualifications for different things? It was awesome. Yeah. Like so good it. stuff. A lot, a lot, to, a lot going on, but that's not what we're talking about today. No, we're talking about listening. We're talking, today. we're talking about something else. We're talking, you got a lot, there's a lot of things you can do to distract you from doing this, but you need to focus on getting some listings right now. Wouldn't you say, Jan O'Brien? I, I agree. I mean, I, you know, buyers are going to come from listings, you know, listings are always, no matter what the market is. And, and I think they can be, they can still be frustrating because you can have challenges and whatnot. And, but honestly, Listings is the name of the game. So we wanted to go through the top five listing lead ideas. Now, if you've been, if you're an avid follower of the WBNL podcast, you've probably heard some of these before. But I'm really sharing things I'm personally doing here in Florida, or or and or our team is doing in Vegas that is actually working and is generating some business. And and I was a pre pre show here today. Uh, doing my <laughs> having my counseling session with my <laughs> my my counselor and therapist mad about the frustrations of the real estate business and how you do have to get back and focused and and and, and honestly i i think i coach and teach i'm doing a lot of coaching this week too i had a lot of coaching clients this week and some new potential clients and it's reminds me to get focused on the things that work and not get torn away and i i have to keep reminding myself to stay focused on what my game plan is. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today and what we have to do to, to, to get back in, get more people in the pipeline. You know, before you go on to the first, uh, first, first one here, let me just say, if you do follow us and you do hear us talking about these things a lot, it's because they work. So let me ask you a question, Mr. Listener or Mrs. Listener. If you are, have heard this before and you're like, oh, well, nothing new, here's my question. Have you implemented any of this? Because right. here's the deal. And this is always the problem in real estate. Jan and I, have we've been in the business for 25 plus years, both of us. And um, we fall into the trap of not doing a lot of this stuff as well. So the point is, you, you can't just go invent something new. <laughs> Because it's always the stuff you still got to do. So just listen to what Jan has to say and implement at least one or two of these things. Just do it. Thank you. And honestly, the it, there aren't a lot of brand new ideas. It's about finding the things that you, that resonate with you and doing it consistently every day. Right. That's right. And 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 I'll I'll share with you before we jump in. I, I'm really adamant about this. It's working for me and I'm going to recommend it. And I have had a couple coaching clients this week where everyone feels so chaotic and scattered and there's a million things to do all the time. And what's working for me that I want to share with you is to have two things that you're hundred percent focused on every working day and you do need to take some time off, right? So don't do these when you've got your designated day off or you're doing a vacation or a staycation or you're taking a day off, a couple of days off, a weekend off, whatever the, the case may be. Because we all have a tendency to work seven days a week in this business and find little pockets of time, um, which we call, you know, running our own business and having uh, you know, abundant free time. <laughs> it's, not really, it's not really true, but it's to have a morning routine. And if the morning routine is something that is for you and it's for you in your mind, body and spirit, let me just say it that way. What's going to help you do something for yourself so you can be in a better mindset to start the day and tackle the things that you need to do in a day? For me, it's a meditation 
and I have been committed to doing yoga. I'm going to do a shout out to Yoga with Adrian. I love this lady. She's got tons of followers on YouTube. She does things in 30 day increments. So there's like a whole February theme thing. I'm on day four of that. I just did it. It was awesome. And I love it. Okay. So, uh, and I'm telling you yesterday, I didn't do her whole video. I did a variation, but I still did the yoga. I had to push through and I said, no, I know there's a million things waiting for me to go take care of, but I need to go spend this 20 minutes for myself. Number one. And then number two, at least an hour or so of doing something to follow up or generate new business. Here that are, that's to me, the two non-negotiables. Then the rest of the day falls into place. And for me, it's what is your area that you're going to be focusing on to generate other business? And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. So I'm going to get into what those other areas are, but you got to start the, the day off with those other two things, in my opinion, and then everything else falls into place. Otherwise you get up and you're just, your day is controlled by whatever's on your schedule or the person who just texted you that they wanted to go see a property or whatever. Okay. And if you need a little help with that to get jump started, go over to our website, wbnlcoaching.com, go to freebies and download the Agent Perfect Week. It's a spreadsheet that you can add all your information in there. It really will give you a visual of how you can actually monitor and, and uh, build up your day, including those two very important things. Yeah. And go, we have a couple videos on that, that we've recorded about doing the daily. Right. I call do the daily. So that's my daily too. All right. So let's jump into our number one way to get uh, to reconnect with your database. So your database and the people that you know is the number one way to generate listing leads and or get referrals from people that you already know that they may know someone who is ready to sell their home. And the and this is, we've been talking about this since last year, but since I just did all my market updates a month or so ago last month for 2021, everyone pretty much has good news. With the exception, I have a client that's in uh, Peoria. Jessica, and they didn't really have massive in her neighborhood area that she services. They did not have this 20% appreciation, believe it or not. Isn't that interesting? So for the majority of you listening, you had about 20% appreciation, if not more, in your marketplace year over year. That is a huge story for people. Now, I think most of your people may know that the market was, you know, prices were good, but they may not know exactly how much equity they gained. in mm -hmm. year. And that's the story to tell. So this idea doing a, and I'm saying do a video version of this, a video CMA, but if you're like, I'm not going to do video, then don't do a video, but do a CMA, just do one a day or two a day, you know? And so this is the way to make it happen. I just did this with a couple clients this week, print out the list of people in your database that you really know, that you know, that are past clients that are folks that own a home. Okay. Whatever that is, it could be five people. It could be a hundred people. And divide that by 30 days or however long you want to do this. Do this in the next 30 days, though. That becomes the target number of how many you need to do a day or a week or however you're doing that division problem. But if you knock it out, even if you just say, for the next 30 days, I'm going to do 30 of these videos, okay? And Or, or just go in and do a CMA and then do a little, write a little template that just simply tells this story. And the, the, the email... Subject line needs to be something like, uh, gr I have great news for you, or, you know, 30, you know, 75,000 in equity gain last year for you. Something that might get the people to open it up. And then you're just going to say, in case you didn't know, here's what happened in the marketplace. I took the time to do this as a little special gift to you. Um, here, here, I, I know you're going to love the numbers. Um, you can put that in your video. You can put that in the body of your text, of your email or both and attach a CMA. You could use a, a quick CMA. You could use a range. You could do go a little out and use cloud CMA. It looks nice. It doesn't take that much longer. You pick the comps, you put it in there. Within five, 10 minutes, you could have a CMA done and knocked out and sent. Then the key is follow up. So you send it out in an email. Then a couple days later, put into your calendar or in your CRM, call Matt and go, hey, Matt, or text Matt, did you get the great news about your home? All right. And then just have a conversation. The call to action in there is that just doing it out of a service. You're not doing it for sales. Like, hey, Matt, are you thinking of selling your house now that you have 75000 in equity that you gained last year? Obviously, if he's thinking of selling his home and you did that, that you're going to have that conversation. But it's more like, just wanted you to know I'm going to do this on an annual basis. This is just one of the things I do for my clients and or who else do you know 
who's ready to build their wealth through real estate, like ask for a referral. Who else? Who do you know anybody? You know, who's the next person you know who may be thinking of selling? But I love that line about who else do you know that is ready to purchase and 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 bu start building wealth? You know, through real estate. Whatever is comfortable for you. Here's the thing. Just do this. I swear to God. You know what? I'm I, I have been about this. We've we've been you know working on your postcards and the things you've been sending out, and I have to say there is something magical about that equity gain number as opposed to the percentage of year yeah. over year or month yeah, over month. Because amount, right? let's just face it, you know, most people are not mathematicians. I mean, years way, way back at, years and years ago, I used to be a waiter. People could not figure out 15 or 20 percent. That's hard, right? I'll tell you, the only person that I know that could go in, not the only person, but one of the people I know they could say, if you went in and said you had a 33 percent gain, Rich Brodkin could tell you exactly to the penny how much that is over... <laughs> Prices, but most people can. You. And if if you tell someone they have a seventy five thousand dollars more that could possibly be in their bank account, or to be able to flip to put it to be, you know, to to get a different uh, home, that is a that makes that resonates. That resonates. I love it. That that was the switch we we we've talked about. Like your home, you gained this much equity in your home last year compared from December to December, as an example. That that's what you'd want to do. Now, how do you find that out? You have to like, actually, you know, do the the work in the MLS. Okay, oh, yeah, well, maybe your MLS gives you that report, and you can do it generally for the area. You can say Pinellas County, you know, had about a twenty percent gain. The average person gained about. $60,000 in equity or whatever it is for your area. But, but for this specific video or email, you're doing their property. It could be higher. It could be less. It could be, it could be crazy. Some pockets in both the areas that we service have had ridiculous gains in yeah. the price point. Right. Yep. So just do this. Now I don't have just getting started, you know, since last September here in, um, I don't really have next year. This would be something I continue to do because I don't really have any sellers yet. I mean, I have people who purchase, but there's really not much to tell them. They just purchased, you know, three or four months ago. There actually has been some equity. The, actually, now that I say that, I could do this about six months in and say, yeah. wow, since you purchased your property six months ago, it's already appreciated to hear. That's another good story. And it's not like they're ready to sell. You're just doing it as a service and reminding them that you're here in case they meet anybody else that's ready to uh, that they could refer to you, right? So d this is a great one. Uh, so I recommend doing it. Number two, open houses were the easiest way for me to, I actually found sellers in open houses as well. People who came to the open house that had a house to sell first. I think it was about 25% of people that I, as I was tracking it last year. Um, so open houses, if you do them right, hold them, I mean, do a little bit more. Putting up signs is great, but make sure it's advertised online through if it's not your listing, get the listing agent to at least post it because people do come to open houses because they saw it on Zillow, Realtor.com. And generally, if you just get it on your MLS, it distributes down to those channels also. I've had numerous people come to the open house because they saw it on Redfin or Zillow or wherever. Okay, uh, But I also, this is how you can target sellers. Invite the neighbors. Invite the neighbors to the open house. This is where you got to prepare a week, or, a week or week and a half or so ahead of time. Door knock or door drop, do a little postcard or a flyer in Canva, get it printed out and hand deliver those. Invite people personally, knock on their door. If they're not there, leave it and invite them to the open house. People will come. People are going to come anyway when they see your signs. I had, I held open houses where there were no sign. I mean, I couldn't do signs. So um, these things worked. I ran a ad. I did a Facebook ad and uh, the Facebook ad just showed the uh, uh, photos, five up photos, like a collage of photos, had the details of the open house and uh, or to click through and to get the directions. And I captured a bunch of leads that way. Um, so and it was local people. All right? right. So it was local people that were driving around or mail that open house postcard. So do those things. And open houses, obviously, you can pick up some buyers as well. But you'd be surprised that you can pick up sellers who are thinking of selling. And they want to go see their nosy neighbors kind of. I actually had somebody come to go, yeah, we're the nosy neighbors. We just want to see what's, what's going on in this property. So then you have a yeah. conversation. Then you add them to your mailing list because then you're going to be able to put, send them 
you know, what, what's the next one? Number three. So two is open houses. Number three is. Yeah, before we go there though, make sure you go over to WBL, uh, WBLcoaching.com. Once again, go to freebies and there's an open house checklist there. So you won't miss a thing when you're doing open houses. So. Yeah. That's a good checklist too. Come on. People. I think I can't remember what three was. Oh, no. Okay. I'll, I was, I was thinking I could talk about this segue to what, what will be four. Remember, I'll come back to that because when you meet people, you want to put them on and use them in the number four. But number three is powerful. I'm about to do this again. Mailing to absentee owners. This is one of the first things I did when I got started here. Yep. I mailed to the community where I live. Um, it was relatively inexpensive, 350 bucks or so. And I got three people to call me out of those cards. I listed and sold two and I have one that would be is potentially a seller is on my mailing list now, but a seller who wants to sell in the spring. Uh, so now this is, if you're watching on YouTube, Matt designed this, uh, this cool card. I'm, I want to go with this Matt too. I just decided this generic one for the whole uh, community that oh, I'm in. Cool. I like it because it's got this really cool flow of these circles that just shows the difference between 2020 the, the median sales price in this condo community was 115 in 2020, and it jumped up to 145 in 2021 um, for a median equity gain of $30,000, 500. So, hey, that's the story. Somebody gets this mailer and I'm mailing to absentee owners. And I decided to go with absentee owners because I feel like local people have a realtor, generally speaking, generally speaking. And I want, I don't always think, and this is why, I mean, not to say that an absentee owner doesn't know a realtor that's in your area, but there's a, I think a higher percentage of people who, if they are thinking of selling, not exactly sure who they're going to call if they don't live here all the time. Okay. So, or they had it as an investment in this particular case here in Florida, these are absentee owners that are not necessarily an investor that have a tenant in the property there. It's a second home. It's a snowbird. It's somebody who's had it and they're ready to sell it. And in both of my cases, one had a tenant and the other was just a snowbird that was ready to sell it. So, um, and they didn't know who, and they were thinking of it and they happened to get my card and they made a phone call. So I highly recommend that. I just did a postcard and then make it about them, not about you. The back side of the postcard, we have a QR code, a call to action, follow me on these places. Here's my phone number, but go scan and you can go learn about what I do to get your home sold. Okay. So all that is where you might later capture a little bit of more information. If you get drive people to a landing page or a website, but honestly, they're probably just going to call you if they really are interested. That's what happened. Or maybe send an email. So and if you are a Canva user, whoops, if you're a Canva user, we will actually put a link to a template in the show notes today. So you can actually go in and use this template, download it, uh, uh, and you can start using it in your own cam uh, Canva just to give you a little head start on uh, right. boost to get that. Uh, yeah, postcard. I mean, it's awesome. And I'm, I'm ready to get it out. And I use an oversized postcard. Um, I, I, it came in the mail. Here, Here's here's the one I did before it, um, showing this on, on the YouTube channel, if you see it. And so this one was the same area, about two different models. And then there's the back of it with the QR code, phone numbers, big and bold and email. Make it easy for people to connect to you. Okay. So number four, it's the good old local monthly newsletter. My favorite, favorite oh. thing. Don't underestimate the power of an email. Now, a couple things here. Uh, number one, Matt and I created a really, I think a great, I went back and watched this video actually, how to create your monthly local newsletter. So we literally walked down our process step by step. I talked about how I created in uh, MailChimp, I think is where I was actually, no, maybe in this one, I'm using MailChimp locally, but I was in a CRM for the one that I right, you were. It's the same thing, really. It's basically the same thing that the CRM that we use in Vegas has this awesome interface, very much like MailChimp or Constant Contact. So drag and drop content, build a template. We covered all that. Then Matt jumps in and talks about how to make it look beautiful using Canva. So go check that out if, we're, if you're uh, in the show notes or if you're over on YouTube watching this or below here on YouTube, just go, Matt, we put a link in there, right? We'll yeah, absolutely. We do have a link to Jan's actual newsletter in there as well. So you can do that. Check her newsletter out in the show notes too. It's awesome. And, and honestly, this has been such a hit for in Vegas with our team because of uh, have seasoned agents that work with us and you know they weren't always sending something out now consistently they get 
their their clients get this newsletter that it's easy to put together. It's always got the market update in it. My agents now are starting to going to start working on their local area. They service a quick video about Summerlin or Inspirato or Pahrump or wherever they are. And then I do the video once a month. That's the whole area in Southern Nevada, Vegas, that's serviced by our MLS. And then it's like some other interesting information it could be about events here. Here I always do events that are happening in the area. Uh, I, I just started my, I did my first local business spotlight that I'll be putting in my next newsletter for my, um, the salon I found. How did I find my salon when I moved to this new place? I Googled, I Googled and I checked reviews and I looked to see, and I made decisions based on that. That is what people do. This is why you have to have sidebar, a presence, uh, which is very important as a sidebar here. While you're prospecting with people that you don't even know, they're going to Google you and you've got to make sure you have a great presence online and you have been, you know, you've got a Google presence and people can find you when they Google you and get the story about who you are. Okay. And that is how I chose my salon. And I'm very happy. Thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, but this local monthly newsletter is important because it's got to be about local content. And then finally, this is the one that is very labor intensive, right? Right, Matt? It's yes. labor intensive, can have major success, and you probably need a team to help you, you know? So Matt has my marketing and support and helping me with getting more videos done on YouTube. But you have to take the time to create quality content and do it consistently. So uh, it's really, it's taken, it's just like anything. If you're going to farm, if you're going to work expires, if you're going to work FISBOs, all those work, by the way, to generate listing leads, you can't do it once and expect it to work. You can't send one mailer and expect it to work. If you consistently want to get business from any source, you must do it persistently, consistently, and with quality content. That's right. So if you're going to farm good old fashioned mailers, Six months or so, you'll really start to see it if it's consistent and it's good. That's the case with the YouTube channel. It's a good six months plus of putting quality content on our channel over on Living uh, Las Vegas and Henderson in, in Vegas. Now, you know, getting really getting business off of the channel. And in particular, one particular video has hit home. It's on Perump with uh, because there's not a lot of competition for it. But our channel is getting views. There's people following and looking, but not reaching out and talking until they're ready. Yep. But in our one story on top reasons to move to Pahrump is 2.7 thousand views one month ago. Vicky just talked to me yesterday. She's closing her first transaction from somebody who saw her video, called her and wanted to purchase a property. She's got a good six, seven people who've called her. I think more now that have called her and the, th and the beautiful thing is that video is continuing to work for her where when I mail a mailer, that mailer is generally going in the post in the trash, except for the couple people who are in their mind that, Oh, I was thinking of, let me hold on to it in case I want to call her later. But I would say 95% of them are going in the trash can. Um, when you do a video that is specifically about the five reasons or the pros and cons to move to Dunedin, which is the one I'm working on now, um, that is on the channel and it can work for you for years to come. That is why I feel it's worth doing. It's not for everyone, but it does work. The whole point I'm making here in number five, pick the thing that is going to be your, your content creation, your way. It could be expired. You could be like, I'm going to be the expired person. Well, it needs a system. It has to have a, a thing that you do consistently all the time and you follow your system and over time it's going to work. Same thing with doing videos choosing to do social media, networking, um, niching and specializing in probate sales or uh, divorce, whatever it is you choose as your main other area that you're going to do it besides your sphere of influence, you just have to commit to the plan and stick with it. And it's just going to take time. So for me and for our team, it's video and it's, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, so market updates, listing home tours, get a lot of uh, views for us. Then for me, it's working on a buyer and a seller series and then location specific, like I just mentioned, you know, reasons to move, top reasons to move to Perum. Um, You know, I, I have a, a Paul Holub just did a great, great job, Paul. I know you sometimes listen to you listen to our podcast. Um, he just did 12 reasons to move to Houston and then he did 
six reasons to not move to Houston. And it was awesome. I watched that whole video and I learned some things about Houston I didn't know. Super cool. I didn't know it was called the Bio City. Bayou City. And one of his reasons was you're not going to have any scenery, which reminded me of Florida. It's flat. Uh -huh. you're have rolling hills. And you're not going to. But but here's what I love about it. It was brilliant. Great job, Paul. Um, so it's those kind of videos that you're going to do. Um, but also we're playing with shorts right now. Uh, short um, content, whether it's reels or TikTok or um, there are people doing well on TikTok, uh, realtors and so forth, that that's their groove their jam it's probably not for me but i like youtube so i am i am testing and working with shorts right now because i think it's the idea that the long form content which is people go to youtube to look for something to learn something right whereas shorts reels facebook even shorts on youtube are entertainment really are people are scrolling and they're trying to find the funny thing or the thing or whatever and even if you have some decent real estate content up there people do like to look at houses like they like to look at tours but it has to be 30 seconds you know 15 to 20 seconds of content um, i'm testing that to see if it's going to do anything but it's not going to replace the long form content because somebody's going to go in and reasons to move to Houston and find Paul's video and then maybe start watching his videos and then call him. That's the formula we see happen with content creators who stay consistent with it. That's happening with us in Vegas. That is my goal to have happen here in the Tampa Gulf coast area. Uh, but what's missing is consistent videos. I just started doing this this last month and committed to it in the new year. You know, we cranked out three or four videos in the first month. Um, it was mostly getting these market updates and stuff done. Those aren't the ones that are going to bring in the biggest crowds, frankly. So all I have on my channel right now is market updates and video tours. That has to be a staple of your channel, but then you need the educational why your area to start showing yourself as a local expert, right? So um, anyway, that's what we're doing um, and uh, it works, okay? And I don't think you need to do too much more. You choose what it is. Don't try to do all of those things. And I mean, those are all things we're doing. But what I'm saying is you wouldn't want to go, let me do all those things that Jan just talked about. Plus, I'm going to try expires and I'm going to do FISBOs and I'm going to, you know, go do this other thing. You don't have enough time in the day. So choose your battles wisely here. Choose your lead pillars wisely and stick with them. Yeah, and Jan and I were having a conversation before we got started today, kind of just kind of going through what we were going to talk about. And I have to say that it's it's you don't want to do all five of those maybe necessarily or, and four more on top of that. But you need to have more than one, because if you are going to switch all of your marketing over to YouTube right now, you will literally be out of business unless you have something going on because you are not going to get business right away. It's that way with any of them, any of the the prospecting uh to tools, but you have to make sure you've got your eggs in a couple baskets because one basket is not enough in real estate. Three to five. Three yeah. to five. That's my yeah. thing. It's always three minimum. Your database and two more. No more than five. That's my. It's so funny rule. because I I am not at all a dinosaur, but I am not a hundred percent positive that uh, the online <clears throat> world is. It hasn't been proven to me that it is the way to absolutely go. And I'm going to tell you why. What is the conversion rate when you, and there's a reason why for me anyway, and this is what it is for me. I get really excited when videos start getting likes and views and all that kind of stuff. That is completely ego driven. If you go back into a lot of these videos and say, hey, what was our conversion rate? Well, not so good. Maybe not as well as it is when you send a postcard out or go do your open houses or do this. You know what I mean? So you need to really be smart about your business because just getting 3000 views is fantastic and you feel really good about yourself. But if it's not, if it's not turning in anything, okay. But, where I, you I, no, it, so where, where, but to your point, if you're doing it for yourself, then that's not going to help. But if, if there's quality content, and then right. what happens is people will say, I watched your video or I do like in coaching, people will call and or reach out to us and say, I saw, I listened to your podcast or I see your videos and I watched your videos. So I do know that it does convert. We do have people saying, I found and watched your stuff. Now I'm ready to talk to you. So that, you know, you just don't know because even people don't all subscribe. They don't all, you know, they, they come across your content. And if they, if there's an, the whole point here is if it's the consistency, 
of content in this case, or whether you're mailing or whether you're working your expired or FISBO system, you're doing it consistently. You follow your formula and you keep doing it. And then it pays off in the long run. It's a numbers game in the long run. Yeah. I'm certainly not being a poopy pants on it. I'm just saying that it is one of those things that you need to be really, really realistic about. And I think that a lot of people getting into the business right now have this grand idea that they'll just start posting somewhere and they're going to be millionaires. It will magically appear. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't. So you need to be realistic and you need to be consistent and you need to make sure that you've got some other stuff going on too. Like I said, it all takes time. But and, that, and honestly, that is why open houses is, is number two on my list. Your yeah. sphere and then open houses. Yeah. Why? Because open houses, you're literally in front of people face to face. And the majority of people that come to an open house are interested. Right. They're out looking. Because at the end of the day, there is no magic pill. And I, I cannot stress this enough. And we've talked about this for years right now. You know, there is just, it, it's no magic pill. To this. Everyone's always looking for it. The internet always kind of feels like that's it because there's not as, the cost is not the same, right? Right. You can do a lot of things for free uh, uh, online. So there's a whole, it, there is this compelling thing about it, but you have to be consistent and you have to be good at it. And you have to give all the things we talk about all the time. And I, I'm going to step out on the limb here and say that most people just can't do that. And yeah. if everybody did, it would be horrible. If everybody did it, then it would make no difference. So yeah, there right. you are. All right. That's right. So find your zone, find your thing that you like, that you have fun with. This is always yeah. my coaching piece too, that you need to enjoy it. If it's a, if it's like a drag, like, Oh, I got to call another for sell by owner. Then that is not your groove. That's not your choice. That's not your thing. If you find the if if you know that you're good at talking to people and you get up every day and you know that I contact four expired listings and I'm great at it, then you know you're doing the right thing. And boy, that is really a good point because I loved talking to Jan about video and YouTube and all of that. And we just the because Jan lights up about it. Jan is, is a confident trainer and a confident real estate agent. She knows what she she focuses on her her uh, her her focus areas and she knows it and she does become an expert in them and she lights up like the other day we were talking about shorts oh my god it's like ah the shorts are the greatest thing and you're all i mean you know what i mean it is that thing you get really pumped up about it <laughs> they've been out forever and i'm like i'm gonna try it but here's the deal you will learn everything there possibly is about a short and you will start doing the shorts and you start getting business from the shorts it's just you are that kind of you you're methodical like that well, i always it's exciting from, to watch from your lips let's but it has to be consistent. So what I have done in the past to this point is I have, I have bad sometimes about the new shiny object that I like, which is the content creation and the video and all the fun stuff, just like you like all that stuff too. I do. And then if it doesn't, if it's, if it's not done properly and you don't do it consistently, then you, you can get bored with it because you're like, Oh, it didn't instantly get me what I thought it was going to get. So I'm taking my own advice and I know it's several months of doing it consistently and quality before it results in anything. I'm choosing to do the medium of video. That's what I'm choosing to do. In addition to uh, staying in touch with people I know, holding open houses and getting some mailers out. That's it for me in the newsletter, which is another piece of content. The five things I talked about today are the core ways that I am uh, focusing my energy. And then Interestingly enough, the people I'm working with right now in my real estate are coming from different places. I get a random referral from somebody um, and I'm convinced it's because I'm focused on intention of generating some business. So maybe it didn't come from the postcard I mailed out or that piece of content I posted or the hour I put into follow up today. But out of the blue, here comes a text saying this happened to us this week. Out of the blue this week in coaching, it was like, Two people within 10 minutes, hey, um, and I asked the person I spoke to yesterday, how did you find us? I just was Googling real estate coaching uh, team formation and came across your content. So I called you or I texted you. Right. And Same the beautiful thing about video, too, is that, you know, every single one of those points, all five of them, you can repurpose the videos that you're doing in any one of those into all five of those categories. So, you know, it's just one of those things that can be used and leveraged across a lot of things. So, all right. So up. enough uh, going on and on and pontificating, just do it, do the daily, choose your lead gen business thing. That is what it is. You're going to do. Stay committed to it and know you have to do it consistently over time. Not horrible. I mean, like I'm one video a day for those of you that have, have a huge database. Just make a commitment to 
do the daily, do your morning routine for yourself, and then knock out one, for the next 30 days, knock out one market analysis that you sent to somebody that you know, and see where that generates referrals and stuff. Just, just do that. Just do that, forget about everything else I said today, just do that and see what happens. Okay? That is brilliant. And that's, right. a, that's a wrap for episode 199 of the Wandering But Not Lost. 199? Woo! 199? How did that happen? What, what are we going to do for 200? I don't, I don't know. know. We're going to have to do something fun for next week. Mm. All right, everyone. We'll have mimosas and champagne and celebrate 200 episodes. Yeah, maybe I'll wear my tux next week. All right. Mm. Woo -hoo, 200 episodes. <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right, everybody. Get up, get out. Live the life you've dreamed and be forever wandering, but not lost. <laughs>